welcome to the first episode of The Wine Corner. I'm your host, Kelly McKinney. Now, tonight's premiere episode marks the start of my production company's fundraiser on Indiegogo, where our efforts are to raise $2,950 to get our own production equipment, including a camera, editing software, lighting, and sound equipment. This fundraiser is going to... Uh, the success of this fundraiser will launch over half a dozen other projects, including uh, um, an X-Files fan film, uh, the continuation of The Booth at the End, um, so we'll be bringing in Season 3, uh, and a bunch of other things. Um, uh, you can find the link to that, to that fundraising campaign on Indiegogo down below in the uh, description of the video. Um, but we'll talk more about that later. All right, let's talk about the layout of the show. Every week, with the intro video, we're going to start out, it's going to have different music and a different um, chess setup. Uh, this week was uh, the Yugoslav attack, and we had Johann Sebastian Bach, Minuet, and Badneri. Um, uh, and, of course, every episode I'll review a new bottle. Um, and then after that, uh, after I've reviewed the bottle, I'll sit and have a glass, and uh, we'll have what I call coffee talk. Um, um, where uh, I'll go more into the bottle and um, some updates. Uh, this week I'll tell you about the projects that we're going to start up um, with the uh, success of the Indiegogo campaign. Okay, before I, um, before I open up this bottle, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I got into wine. Um, honestly, my first interest came from the show Frasier. Um, and if you don't know, wine was a little bit of a big deal there. So, um, oh, and hence the name of the show, The Wine Corner. Um, and if you don't know about Fraser, I've put the leather together a little clip for you to see here. Thank you, Gil, for that gracious introduction. And hello to you, Seattle. Welcome to the Wine Corner. I hope you're as excited about this new program as I am. I offer myself as Sherpa, a guide, if you will, to lead you through the labyrinth of vintages and wine lists, chateaus and bodegas and take you, hopefully, to a whole new level of sophistication. And I went out and did a little bit of last-minute Christmas shopping. Niles, some sherry? Uh, thank you. you know, sherry? I couldn't possibly, Niles. I'm too upset. <laughs> you know, I don't think... Oh, go on, oh, no. enjoy. It's yeah. not that sissy French wine. It's real Greek champagne. Oh. Ooh, save some for me, Niles. <laughs> Does she display below average intelligence? She once ordered a bottle of white Zinfandel. Jackpot! <laughs> Anyway, can I uh, interest you in a drink? I've just opened a bottle of Cote de Blue Yi. Oh, we must have been saving it. Pergonia hasn't made a decent Beaujolais in years. Well, do you hear that, Niles? <laughs> Our Caitlin is a fellow enophile. When I was little, my father owned a vineyard. I was the only kid on the block who would open a can of Hawaiian punch and let it breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, for God's sake, Niles. That wine spent less time in the bottle. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, you have correctly identified the first three wines. Let's see if number four can break the tie. Niles, it was ripe, round, and thoroughly seductive. I said Australian Shiraz. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Fraser, what did you think? Well, contrary to my brother, I thought it was dark, dusky, and supple. But I also said Australian Shiraz. <laughs> You're both right. <laughs> we are still tied. <laughs> well, Niles, it's the moment of truth. Don't choke. Please, prepare to be stomped like a late harvest Gewurztraminer. Gentlemen, it was jammy, plummy, dense, and chewy. <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind that it was a Napa Valley Merlot. Huh? And you, Fraser? A nice big wine with excellent heft. It's Napa, all right, but as I always say, why go Merlot when you can call a cab? <laughs> <laughs> I thought this bottle might trip you up. Gentlemen, 
It's actually a blend of 45% Cabernet. And? And 55% Merlot. <laughs> Niles wins by 10%. <laughs> Okay, so, um, originally when I first got into wine, because of Fraser, um, I tried sherries and ports and stuff like that, and they start off just extremely complex. I mean, unless you're getting something really cheap, which, which I have tried really cheap and disgusting, um, sherries and ports, but, um, I, this one's pretty good. I have tried this one before. Um, but, uh, then I realized that I have uh, a sensitive palate, you know, tasting things, um, and started tasting other wines here and there. Uh, and my general interest, um, uh, this show is a really great excuse for me to taste a wonderful bottle of wine. Um, uh, being a father, two kids, a uh, husband, uh, working all the time, writing, filmmaking, um, I don't get to the chance to go to as many social occasions as I'd like. Um, me and my wife would love to go wine tasting. It's just not a possibility. So, hence, the wine corner was born. Alright. The moment you've all been waiting for, and that I've been waiting for since I bought the bottle, we're finally going to open it here. Alright, what we've got here um, is a uh, Dow's Fine Tiny Port. I bought it for... Um, 10.99 at um, Meyer. The Meyer here, in uh, well, not here, but uh, in Kokomo, has uh, really just a really great wine selection. They've got a um, now just because you can pay a lot of money for a wine doesn't make it a good wine. But what I mean is that they have a, a really big selection. There's not a wine, st there's not a uh, liquor store around except for maybe in Indianapolis that has a selection like. Um, Meyer does. But this is the Dow's Fine Tawny Port. Okay. Um, it's aged for th three years in an oak barrel. And when you drink a port, okay, uh, now I mean, I know that sherry was the big thing on Fraser, but when you drink a port, um, you should expect to um, have a lot of complex flavors, okay. Uh, uh, really dense, packed with flavors. Um, if you don't have a real sensitive palate, then some of them are going to be um, more overwhelming than others. You're going to get that oak, nuts, spices, some dried fruits, um, and uh, let's see, let me just um, read what this says here for you. Okay, uh, made from wines produced at Dow's finest Douro Valley vineyards and age to perfect maturity under ideal conditions in Dow's historic stone-walled wine lodge built in 1825. The smooth fruit flavors of this wine with hints of nut and spice can be enjoyed anytime and pair wonderfully with cheese, nuts, and desserts. Deliciously chilled in warm, delicious chilled in warm weather. Um, now, I did chill this bottle and it's sweating a bunch, so that's why the label is... Um, it's not it's not really that warm in here either. Uh, I'm wearing a short sleeve sweater. Let's open this thing up. Ruby red. 
Um, and uh, viscosity, you know, it doesn't it doesn't look real watery. Um, uh, and then you can kind of see it here. Um, when you tip it on its side, um, you're looking for color density, and it uh, kind of tells you how old it is. Yeah, you can sort of see the three years there. Okay, spin. Okay, so when I put, oh, man. first thing I smell to the nuts. Yeah, it's like this. Oh wow, it's like this rich almond, you know, and not not like yeah, kind of like a, a sweet, not a citrusy, but like a sweet amaretto smell. Oh, wow. Let's see what else I can smell. It's my palate, not my nose. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Right off the bat. For me, it kind of... I gotta say, it clashes, because... You've got this... Really, I mean, okay, it's it's incredibly smooth, all right. Mm. But then you get that lingering, like molasses or something. Mm. Taste the spices there. Let's say maybe some cloves and some allspice. Yeah, and that the uh, you know like a a dried um, fig or a, a, even an apricot, you know that, that sort of sweet that you get. That's like the the aftertaste. It's that uh, sweet apricot. No, not not really sweet apricot. It's very dry. It's very. I mean, it, I'd say it's semi sweet. It's got a dry kick, okay, and it comes off pretty sweet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, delicious. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think the. Uh, the almond. Mm. After you let it sit, you go to taste your tongue. You know what I mean? Mm. That's when I get that almond. Like I've been eating a lot of almonds. Mm. Yeah. There you have it. Dallas, my Tony Port. Let it breathe long enough, don't you think? Mm. Muy delicioso. Time for coffee top. plan is during coffee talk I'm not going to be drinking coffee okay I just did a wine review show okay I'm going to continue to sip on this delicious Dallas fine tiny port and um, this uh, this week on coffee talk we're going to talk about that uh, special fundraiser that I've got going on um, the uh, production company my production company is Mac 10 CW Productions and uh, 
Um, after, uh, like I said, our goal is uh, a little under three thousand um, dollars, so that we can get equipment. We're going to buy our own equipment so that we own it, and it's ours. But uh, this uh, campaign came about after uh, two years of prod projects, uh, after two projects that uh, started product production and then didn't finish. Um, it was blatantly obvious, obvious that the reason that they didn't uh, restart is uh, due to the lack of infrastructure um, here in Indiana. So with our own equipment, that isn't a problem anymore. Um, before, uh, as a director and writer, I was relying on DPs with their own equipment. If we have our own equipment, um, I can just direct myself. So that no longer becomes a problem. Now, first one moving back into production is the X Files. We have a full cast. We have a full cast. A lot of sets on standby, um, and the other sets would be easy to come by because my partner, Jay Martin, his wife is a uh, very successful realtor, um, which uh, broadens the which broadens the um, scope of sets available to us because um, it just makes things that it makes it a little easier to sell property when you've got advertisements being thrown out there on YouTube um, for free. People get to see uh, like a virtual tour as it was used in a film. Um, and then that sort of gives it like a historical landmark for some people. Um, it may sound cheesy, but it works. But like I said, we have a full cast, very dedicated full cast. And whew, she didn't know I'm a lightweight. Okay. So... I'm already starting to feel like warm behind the ears here, you know. Mm. And that's so good. It's just this constant nutty, fruity flavor. Uh, like I said, it finishes really dry, but it goes in real smooth and uh, it's, and rather sweet. It's, it's just an amazing, complex drink. Um, now, concerning the booth at the end, season three. Um, <clears throat> of course, that would be a fan continuation of the series. Um, but uh, the booth at the end already has a really big following. So this campaign should go off without a, without a sense, okay? Um, but uh, the booth at the end is single location. The entire thing is dialogue. Um, people sharing their thoughts, feelings. They're um, talking about what they've done, what they're going to do. Um, and if you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend you do so. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I'll post a link... Um, in the bot in at the bottom in the description where you can find um, the uh, episodes to <coughs> where you can find the episodes to the booth at the end season three I mean uh, sorry seasons one and two so that you can catch up on the storyline when we launch it um, all we have to do is cast and um, I've got to finish the script that's it thanks for tuning in. I'll be back in two weeks with a new bottle. Next time, we'll head to the set of The Lord of the Rings as we sample a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. Mm. Don't forget to check out the Indiegogo campaign. The link's posted below. And thank you. This is Kelly McKinney. Reminding you that a great wine is like a great woman. Ever intoxicating, always surprising, and only getting better with age. Thank you.